Welcome uh, to our Equality, Diversity and Inclusion Roundtable. Um, so we've got lots of representatives from the College of Science and Engineering here um, and we're really looking forward to having this discussion. Just quickly before we jump in, um, in case people aren't aware, Equality, Diversity and Inclusion, we will be referring to it as EDI. I know not all students will be aware of that, so just in case anybody doesn't know, um, we'll be using those terms interchangeably. Um, so yeah, just quickly, I'm Sarah. I'm a fourth year computing science and artificial intelligence student. And um, I'm also the president of Women in STEM. So I've been on the committee for three years now. So I've had a fair bit of experience with the different schools and kind of being able to identify the strengths and weaknesses of the EDI programmes. Um, so yeah, looking forward to talking more about this. And I'll pass over to Athena to introduce herself quickly as well. Yeah, um, so hello everyone uh, for me as well. So uh, for those who don't know me, I'm Athena and I have graduated from the University of Edinburgh in 2019 with a PhD in um, the women's representation and experiences in supercomputing. And I have been uh, collaborating um, since 2019 with the um, Women in STEM Society of the university. And we have done a lot of things that we will discuss later. And uh, yeah, uh, maybe we should um, say uh, hello to each and every one of the panel. What do you think, Sarah? Yeah, so um, welcome to all of our panelists. Um, we don't want to go into like, like formal introductions um, in a minute, just because there are so many of you and we hope our students uh, that are here know who you are. Um, but I will just quickly run through who we have, if you want to give a wee wave. Um, so we've got Dave, Dave Robertson, Head of College of Science and Engineering. Uh, Karen Halliday, the Dean of Systematic Inclusion for the College of Science and Engineering. Uh, Gino Donoghue, EDI Coordinator for Chemistry. Uh, Rudy, sadly, actually Rudy can't come anymore. Um, I just realised my order is different from this one. Uh, but we've got David Ingram as well from the Director of Diversity and Inclusion, the School of Engineering. Audrey McLaughlin, the EDI Coordinator for the School of Geosciences. Uh, Simon Kelly, School Head for Geosciences. Um, and yeah, back to Vijay, he's the director of EDI uh, for informatics, but yeah, as I said, he has had an emergency and can't come anymore. Um, and Ian Gordon, School of Head for the School of Mathematics, and Victoria Martin, director of EDI for the School of Physics and Astronomy. Um, I hope I got everyone in there. If anyone, have I missed anyone, give a shout. Um, yeah, and just before we jump into the questions, we wanted to introduce what we have been doing. So Women in STEM have been collaborating with Athena for over a year now um, to set up a programme which um, includes equality, diversity and inclusion workshops and a mentoring scheme. And then last June, after our pilot scheme ended, um, we conducted a large survey to investigate STEM students' experiences of UDI. And we received um, 450 responses, which were very eye-opening and um, made the need for our programme and EDI education quite clear. So we published our findings in our um, of, of our programme evaluation, our survey and some further research on what the schools in the College of Science and Engineering, Engineering offer um, in terms of EDI. So that's on our report, uh, which I'll link in the chat in a little minute. Um, so this was distributed to all the schools and shared with staff and students. And it's been downloaded from the Spread the Word and the Women's Time websites uh, hundreds of times. Um, so following on from the release of our report, we've had meetings with many representatives from the college. Um, many of whom are here today and we so we met with the, some representatives from the College of Science and Engineering as a whole, the schools of informatics, physics, chemistry, geosciences and engineering. Uh, we had scheduled scheduling issues with biology and we were unable to meet with maths as well um, but all of these experiences have helped us form the questions we'll be putting to the panellists today. Um, so yeah, I think Athena will tell us a little bit more about what we've been doing this semester. Um, yeah, so uh, also we will we can add a link for the report for those who haven't um, read it and you might be interested in the chat later. Um, so yeah, so um, last semester we added more uh, of our workshops, of our equal diverse inclusion uh, related workshops and also our mentoring scheme grew um, and we have around uh, 200 participants. Um, so we were very pleased that Comsoc um, managed to sponsor uh, some of our workshops and also we applied and we received a, a very small grant from the um, Students Association for um, supporting our mentoring scheme uh, this semester. Um, so we, we received great feedback and attendance from these workshops and also this semester we added even more 
Um, so, um, however, we, we do a lot of work, as you, as you may know, and as you can see, but we feel that um, the way we run it right now, uh, this, this program is not sustainable and it cannot reach uh, all the students, so it can have maximum effect. Um, because it only depends on students' efforts and uh, the interest of uh, the presidents each year of the society, uh, the time they have and the funds they have. So we reached out to the college and we're reaching out again to the college for, um, for help. Um, so every representative who spoke, um, as Sarah said, uh, they, uh, they were very enthusiastic about what, what we have done. Um, however, we're almost five months after we, we, we released our uh, report and had those meetings and we're still facing um, the same barriers on to, in, to implement our um, uh, recommendations. Um, and that is uh, um, sometimes lack of communication, the, the, the quite complicated structure of EDI in the college, which we might have the chance to discuss and uh, maybe some COVID-related uh, issues. Um, so we felt like there's a lot more that we can do and uh, hopefully um, we, we, we might be able to find a collaborative way of doing things today. Um, so um, yeah, so I think we should start with uh, our little um, discussion and um, Sarah. Yeah, so um, just to kind of kick off, um, one of the stats from our report was that um, more than 92% of students don't know if their school has an EDI officer and almost half of the few responses that did know um, didn't know what the officer's jobs actually were. So I wanted to start off with um, what are your jobs basically? Um, so I, yeah, if you could tell, if all the EDI officers could tell us a little bit more about your responsibilities um, I know they might vary from school to school, um, so I will ask each of you, but I know you might have very similar answers. Um, so yeah, I'm going to start off with Shauna. Um, I don't know if I'm saying it wrong, I've got a friend, is it Shauna or Shanud? Um, do you want to start? Oh, yeah. Sorry, you didn't introduce me, so I didn't know if you could tell I was here. Um, oh, sorry. So, <laughs> so I'm the EDI director for biology. The EDI officer is actually Kate Thornback. Um, we do have different jobs, so I can tell you what mine is. Um, so the EDI director in biology is a 20% physician. So that means that um, I get seven hours a week to do this job. So that's the perspective. Um, what we do is largely we facilitate and hold people accountable for EDI relevant activities. So we are coordinators. We gather information, um, look for patterns, and then make recommendations. And so this year, for example, we rolled out a COVID survey for all staff in biology, including postgraduates, um, Hmm. What's it, including postdoctoral um, research associates. And what we were looking for there was whether certain groups were being more affected by COVID than others in terms of their career trajectory and um, mental health. So of course, everyone was affected by COVID, but we were looking at whether or not there were specific groups that needed a little extra help. Um, in addition to that, we've worked with the school to coordinate a response to the Black Lives Matter movement over the summer. We run a career coaching program. We facilitate a working parents network and we help administer the family friendly fund. But actually one of the major tasks of the EDI director is to coordinate the Athena Swan um, Award, which is a big data gathering and analysis exercise about what's happening in EDI um, in biology. So my job is kind of weird and I can understand why most students wouldn't really know what I do because what I do is largely behind the scenes of um, gathering data and talking to people. So for example, I work with the BTO and the EDI committee works with the BTO on decolonizing cur the curriculum, but is the BTO that will, uh, the biology teaching association that will actually implement those changes. So that's, that's sort of what we do. We run around kind of behind the scenes um, looking for places that need help, essentially. Um, we've also um, 
did put up this summer um, a reporting tool for students who were experiencing racial aggressions. Um, so the question we get the most is, but where do I report this? So we did put together a reporting portal for that. And that goes directly to Kate in an anonymized way um, and then gets um, put through the relevant part of the school. Um, if students choose to make it not anonymous, <clears throat> they can give us identifying information. But of course, we can't follow up with them individually if they choose to anonymize their data. Yes, great you're doing that. I think it's definitely something that's needed. Um, yeah, so we're going to go a bit more into all the different initiatives um, in a little bit. But yeah, if, um, Victoria, do you want to tell us a bit more about your role in physics and astronomy? Um, okay, I think what Sinead said is actually broadly relevant to what my role is. But um, I, I think there's... Uh, so, uh, I mean, physics is a, a smaller school than biology. And, and so the one additional thing I think um, we do in physics is we have a bit more input into the physical infrastructure um, because we are just in two buildings and not like biology in several. Um, so something, this is just a small thing, but we've been cam um, campaigning and finally got some gender unidentified uh, toilets in our building because it was built a, a long time ago. Um, and I think the other thing I just kind of emphasize in addition to what Sinead said is, is kind of facilitating some of the students groups that work together. So we do have a, a parent and carers network, but we've also now at the, um, because students wanted it, we've got a, a BAME group for staff and students and an LGBT group. We've actually got two, one for undergraduates and one for postgraduates and staff because that's the way that the people running it want to do. Um, but I do the other things that Sinead has highlighted as well. Yeah, I was expecting some of you will have um, very similar responsibilities, but um, I don't know, David, do you want to add anything? Or David Ingram, it's a couple of Davids, um, for engineering? Yeah, so I, th I, would, I would echo almost everything that's been said so far. Um, the engineering position is a little bit different because um, I'm, I'm a formal member of the school management team uh, and the, the senior school management team, and we're a very large school. So, so um, that's actually quite a significant statement by the school about how important this, this thing is. Um, I don't lead the Athena Swan um, submission. We, had a, we appointed an Athena Swan champion to do that. Um, but I was very, very involved in it. And um, I've also been involved in, in a lot of strategic decision making and, and trying to ensure that we use uh, equality impact assessments in everything that the school does and to try and make that a, a normal process for us. Um, and I think that's probably the biggest thing that we've been doing of late and it has the biggest impact. And it's not just trying to get people to think about, do I have to do this small action or do I have to do that small action, but reflecting on the, on the, on the totality of what they're doing and identifying where there might be things that need to be changed. And we're, we're supporting people to, to go through that process. Um, the, the only other thing to say is that, you know, we did a massive number of EQIAs as part of the COVID changes for the, for the buildings when the, when the shutdown started. And we're start, and I'm I'm also involved with the team from the teaching side of the school that are reviewing the curriculum, and it, it's not just a decolonising the curriculum thing. We're having a massive review of the engineering curriculum to update that and to and to deliver a sort of engineering curriculum for the 22nd century or 21st century, or whichever one period I can't remember. So so that's that's all I wanted to say really. Yeah, it's really interesting you have someone um, a different sort of structure because that was one of the comments we heard a lot was um, that the EDA officers are too and like too focused on Athena Swan that they don't have time for lots of other stuff. So it's interesting that you've got a different structure there. Um, well, did you have anything to add, add at all? I'm the Equality, Diversity and Inclusion Co Coordinator for the School of Geosciences. It's not a very um, defined role, uh, mainly leads the committee. Uh, so I'm, I do work with the widening participation team and the Athena Swan Committee 
Uh, but really, it's just a matter of we'll create a, an annual action plan, which we'll then try and implement throughout the year. Um, obviously, that's changed partly because of COVID. Uh, but people can approach me if they have any questions about um, EDI or they want to take forward initiatives. Um, obviously, we'll go through some initiatives later on, but I mean, in terms of the visibility, which I think has been raised by this uh, organisation, we've tried to sort of um, implement things like um, a periodical newsletter where we can uh, flag where students can turn to in terms of if they have any um, dealings with inequality or abuse or anything like that. Uh, also just sort of highlighting the work that we're doing and hopefully doing that on their website as well. In the past we've run forums where students can get involved and have their say as well. Uh, but hopefully we can go through some of the initiatives uh, later on in the discussion. Yeah, it's great you're taking forward some of the recommendations. Um, so I'll go to Jean finally as um, for the school's EDI officer as before we go to Karen. Um, have you got anything you want to add at all? No, but, but very similar to a lot, a lot of my colleagues here. Um, I'm the Equality, Diversity and Inclusion Coordinator for the school. Um, like many people, it's not my job. It's, it's sort of a voluntary role on top of my sort of day, day role, if you like. Um, so in terms of what I do, I chair our EDI committee. Um, that is a mix um, of academic, professional services and research staff and postgraduate and undergraduate students. Um, and we meet monthly to look at ways that we can improve EDI in the school. We, we take a sort of a whole school approach, I guess, as a, as a community. Um, and speaking of community, that's uh, one of our organisations within the school, which is student led and student run, um, looking at postgraduate and undergraduate student experience. And so we try and connect with them. I guess coordinator is a really sort of important part of that title that I've got in terms of because I'm just one person I don't I don't do everything it is a lot of as Sinead said running around behind the scenes trying to connect people a lot of people care about this stuff um, and it's trying to make sure that we can have the the best impact possible and um, like David said I, I also sit on the um, management committee for the school um, which means there's a direct line between the EDI committee and the and the management committee of the school and it also means I can bring an EDI lens to the day-to-day -day school business if you like um, from it's the chemistry planning and resources committee is what it's called so it is about future plans for the school about using resources and so having an EDI champion in that room when those sorts of decisions are made being made is, is important for our school as well um, and COVID has taken up an awful lot of our time too. So we've, um, we, I was uh, trained in one of the engineering schools, uh, equality impact assessment um, uh, workshops. And so um, making sure that our equality impact assessments are up to date and, um, and relevant and consulted on and reviewed um, would be one of my, my roles as well. Um, and yeah, I'll leave it at that for now. Great, thanks everyone. Um, and then uh, just quickly, hmm? Ara, sorry to interrupt, but uh, before we move to Karen, who is the EDI person of the college, I just want to add that uh, VJ from the uh, informatics, uh, he couldn't attend, but he sent us uh, some of the of his responses to the questions. So I will just put them in the chat. So for anyone who is interested. OK. Thanks, Nina. Okay. Um, and yeah, we are already running quite short in time. So, um, Karen, if you could kind of quickly tell us how you um, coordinate the, the college as a whole um, as the EDI, um, the Dean of Inclusion for the college. Okay, I'll have a go. Uh, <laughs> short period of time. Um, yes, so um, my role is uh, currently developing uh, an EDI strategy across the college. And we're currently going through a consultation exercise with all the schools with whom um, we meet uh, regularly. So I guess um, my role in, in the senior team is really to uh, be aware of the data so that both the uh, quantitative data and the qualitative data, uh, for instance, collected um, from surveys. Um, across the university or in different parts um, of the university. So we have a keen eye on that and we're currently um, amalgamating um, some of that quantitative data in um, a database. Um, so this is an ongoing activity and the idea is that this is going to be accessible 
um, to all that you see it, in particular uh, managers. Um, I think one of, um, so I'm relatively new to the post, I guess, and uh, one of the things I wanted to do was, like I said, to evolve this college-wide strategy and really with a, a view to identifying sort of um, themes that cut across the college. And we are, I guess another focus is something that quite a few people have talked about. We refer to it as mainstreaming. So this is the idea that EDI is part and parcel of how we operate um, and you know how we do business. And I think there have been lots of moves uh, towards that. Um, and an acceleration of that actually through the COVID pandemic. And uh, Jean mentioned this uh, uh, equality impact assessment, which um, is now part of standard um, business. So all the processes or that are rolled out or new processes have to go through a, a, an equality impact assessment. So this is a really uh, important uh, move forward. I think I could go on talking <laughs> for a long time, but I think I'll stop and I'll allow, uh, allow people to ask questions. Okay, thank you. I know we've, we've had many conversations and we know that we always end up having very long conversations when we're chatting to you and um, we get into the sort of nitty gritty. Um, yeah, we'll move on quickly. And I just want to finally ask um, Ian as the head of maths. Um, so we attempted to get in touch with the EDI officer from every school and we couldn't find any information anywhere about a maths EDI officer or coordinator. Um, and sort of five months later, I've asked the maths students in the Women's STEM committee and we still managed to find it. It was actually only last week when we asked Karen um, that we find out you do have an EDI officer. And um, so I wanted to ask what your thoughts were on the importance of having a visible EDI officer and, and like visibly promoting EDI and what you think you can do to increase that uh, visibility um, in the school. Yeah, I should. So, um, the, uh, we do, we have had an EDI officer all the time. It's somebody who's now stuck in the U S for COVID reasons has been one of the things. And they're also called in our school, the good practice, um, director at that point, which happened about, uh, five or six years ago. They took that role in order in terms of good practice. It was for us to try to um move towards something that was as far as we could make it action based at that point to emphasize making action i think that one of the things that has been happening in the school in the last i guess it's the last 18 months or a year has been a greater awareness as we've been going through different types of processes we've tended to focus mostly what we've been doing either on um uh, members of, of staff in the school, or PhD students, or looked at very simple pieces of data that were related to, to students or to things like widening participation. And I think the thing that we are coming to realise and trying to work through how we organise it is that we want to start to have a stronger student voice. So this discussion today, for example, is uh, going to be uh, interesting to hear and I hope that there are some math students who are in the on the call as well to try to hear a little bit more about how do we start to engage with those students and how do we start to to deal with some of the issues uh, that might be might be popping up where I think that in a certain sense what we also need in in doing this is a better understanding therefore of what it's like to be a student in the school from different points of view, it might be to do with teaching, but actually a much broader, a broader way. I think we've engaged quite well on teaching issues and it's how to broaden that out. And so at the moment, uh, we are going through a process of changing all of our committee structures in ED&I. And that's one of the things that we want to start to pull out is more systematic student representation. Yeah, well, um, very glad to hear that. Um, I know there's a few math students on here already. Um, so yeah, I'm sure they'd be glad to hear that as well. Um, I'll pass over to Athena now to kind of lead a conversation more on about the training and workshops um, and that side of things. 
Yeah, um, so uh, as you um, uh, may know, we, we run these workshops together with, uh, so myself with the Women in STEM Society and the COMSOC, and uh, we have received very good feedback and we feel that it's something that the, um, the students need. And actually, um, we have some evidence for that because 90% of the, of the survey respondents, uh, of our survey respondents, uh, said that um, having such workshops uh, will uh, improve the EDI um, status and awareness of the students and the university. Um, and also we run the uh, mentoring scheme, which again um, had the great success with this year have doubled, we have doubled the number of participants. And again, we received very, very good feedback. Uh, it's a bit funny to, to brag about it, but <laughs> that's the truth. Um, so I just wanted to ask um, all of you, um, who, whoever wants to, to, to respond on that. So how, how important do you think the um, educating students on EDI matters is and uh, whose responsibility is to do so because uh, we feel that, and that's what the, the students told us, that the university doesn't really provide um, such kind of um, education. So uh, you can raise your hand um, if you want to. Um, yeah, so I see, I see David. Yeah, yeah. I have a quick question. Sure. The first thing is that on your poll that's popped up, it says on a scale from one to five, but it doesn't tell us if one is important or five is important. Very good point. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, so one is um, not important. <laughs> five is extremely important, let's say. Maybe the poll will come back, it's gone away. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I, I wanted to say that, I mean, from our point of view in, 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 um, in engineering, then this is actually very, very important. And it's uh, not only is it important, but it's also part of the accreditation for a lot of the engineering degrees. So the, the learning societies require that engineers behave in an ethical way and have a good understanding of the, uh, of the impact on their, on, on their professional life of, of diversity and inclusion and ethics issue and, and equality issues in the work that they're doing as well as, as well as in the way that they behave. Whether we do a good job of doing of, of telling the students that or not I, is something that I'll leave to our students to, to tell us. And we'd love to do it better than we do, but it, it's a very critical part of engineering education. That sounds uh, great. Yeah. Um, uh, so I see Sinead. I'm sorry, I'm not sure if I pronounce your name correctly. It's just Okay. Sinead. okay. <laughs> Um, I'll put my hand down in a moment. Um, so, I mean, I think it's incredibly important that students get an education about EDI relevant um, or an EDI relevant education, but I think it should just be mainstreamed into a lot of the courses. And this is, I think, why we're working so much with the BTO. So I think extra workshops are great. They're necessary. They let people self-select based on their particular experiences, but I think something I hear from students a lot as a teacher and something I hear from staff a lot as a manager is that everybody feels like there are huge demands on their time. And I think the way we shouldn't do things is by stuffing more into everyone's time. I really think it's a matter of getting EDI intercalated nicely into the curriculum and social structures that we have. Um, I mean, I'm saying this partly as an overworked academic. Um, and partly because my, partly based on student feedback and partly because of my own experience. So I came in, I came into science through a women in science program, through a widening participation initiative in high school. And I've had really great mentors throughout my entire career. And with the exception of that one high school program, the mentors have always been part of my academic career. It's not, it's not been like an extra thing on top of it. Um, and I think that's important because if you want women or other or minorities to do well in science, you can't take time out of their science. Um, and I think this is something we often forget that if we want minorities to do well in science, we need to not make extra demands on their time that take away from the actual science. We need to roll it in to the science. I'll stop ranting. That's my like. Yeah, well, I, yeah, thank you very much for that. I absolutely agree. I, I, I'm just not, um, uh, I feel that it's not only the minority's uh, responsibility to to deal with EDI uh, issues, so it shouldn't be only their time, you know, um, 
uh, that they have to teach us. This is not what we are doing, and this is what we uh, not we don't expect that to happen. Yes, that's uh, why it's being mainstreamed into the whole curriculum. Uh, yes, because I everyone. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay, so we say minorities. the same. Yeah, yeah, we yeah, say the same thing. Just wanted to highlight. So yeah. Yeah, but I'm advocating against is taking minorities away from their programs, putting extra demands on their time and making a ghetto. What I'm yeah. advocating for is mainstreaming that so that everybody sees it as a matter of course. Absolutely. OK, so so we agree on that. And this is what we want to do. And also we feel that uh, coming uh, at this moment, coming just from the students, it kind of feels like an extra thing to do rather than just coming through uh, each school or the college itself. So I see Karen has her hand raised. So. Okay, uh, thank you. <laughs> yeah, I just want to um, really support what Sinead was saying. Um, I think it's going to be, I mean, th this audience will obviously support the idea of <laughs> EDI uh, training of some sort, um, but there have been quite a few open discussions on the provision of EDI training so that it is mainstream, so it's part of the curriculum. And I think this is really important. Um, the, we are about to, um, so Colin Harmon is about to go forward uh, into a, a curriculum review process uh, where these types of issues uh, will certainly um, get discussed. So I just want to raise that. Also, another thing that um, is on the, the table in the near future is that uh, we were meant to roll out a new personal tutor um, scheme. This was meant to start, <laughs> but of course uh, this year, but of course COVID has gotten in the way. And this um, new personal uh, tutor system um, will come with a whole range of changes to the PT system including um, much more support for well-being and for instance some um, peer-to-peer uh, mentoring or support so i just wanted to raise that but um, unfortunately um, um, the wholesale <laughs> changes that we've had to make um, over the last year due to the covid pandemic have meant that some things have naturally um, had to be put um, on hold so i just wanted to mention that um, yeah, that's great. So let's hope that um, COVID goes away soon so we can see the <laughs> plans uh, implemented finally. Uh, really looking forward to that. Um, I don't know if anyone wants to add anything on that. We um, there's also... a message from David and um, David Ingram on the chat. I don't know whether you want to see it as well or whether we just read it out. Um, oh, okay. So... Uh, yeah. David, yeah. I can say it. I, I was thinking about a bit more about the engineering education. And what we're really trying to do is, is get behavioural change in people. And in some ways, I think it's an, maybe an over engineering view, but in engineering, we consider health and safety to be something that only works when it's behavioural. People have to do health and safety without thinking about it. And so we're trying to do things to get people to think about DNI in that unconscious behaviour point of view. I would, I would add that as professional unconscious behaviour because to some extent, we can't control what people do in their private lives. Hopefully, if they're professionally trained, they'll behave well, but, you know, we, we can't spy on them. <laughs> so. That's uh, that's a very good point. Um, David, thank you for adding that. So I see too, I, I think Jean was first. <laughs> so, yeah. Thanks, Athena. Just to follow up on what David said there. So we've, we've taken a similar sort of track um, in terms of actually thinking about health and safety so as a chemistry department we take health and safety very very seriously people work with lots of dangerous chemicals in lots of large quantities and um, we have a very good health and safety culture in the in the school and we've been trying to mainstream EDI in a, in a similar sort of way by following what has worked for health and safety and and trying to put EDI almost along that same track so the first way we did that um 
uh, two years ago now was we have an annual health and safety lecture that all um, sort of final year or final couple of year project students, undergraduate students, PhD students and staff have to do for health and safety to remind everybody how people should behave in terms of a health and safety way. And what we did was um, sort of a little bit of guerrilla tactics where we actually talked about mental health as part of health and safety. And we talked about um, sort of bullying and harassment from a context of psychological safety, if you like, and had that in there with the health and safety such that, you know, we think about you holistically, you know, we want people to be healthy in our in our department for, for study and for work and also to be safe and, and broadening the concept of what that actually means. Um, and this went down really well, actually, in the school with, with students and staff that it was incorporated into that culture of, we, you know, we, we report things, we look out for each other as a community, we keep each other safe, we keep each other well. And we're sort of building on that now um, and developing an EDI seminar along the same lines as a health and safety seminar. So an annual thing that we do every year that everybody goes to. Um, and it's a little bit of a statement of intent in terms of what we would like our culture to be. Um, and how we expect people to to behave. You know, people come here to, to study and they come here to work. Um, and we want to provide an environment where it's a place where people can can thrive and flourish and, and how we how we see that um, being in, in reality. Um, and also education, it was one of our, um, so we had three strands to our, our Black Lives Matter response, um, sort of representation, um, uh, experience and, and education and so it's forming part of, part of that education strand as well where we're actually you know in the EDI community and all of the people sort of on this panel will have heard things like you know about microaggressions or psychological safety or discrimination but um, to get to the mainstreaming uh, picking up on what, on what Sinead said and building it into the the everyday um, um way of way of being um is actually to 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 educate ourselves and then to educate each other on these terms to make sure that people understand sort of what what they mean when they when they hear about these things so so yeah so i was just following on from that using using the health and safety and the, i guess the research and health and safety culture and and trying to bring edi in in along that way as well that's, that's a very, very nice and, and uh, I, I believe that mental health should be now part of, uh, of just uh, the, the general, the broader term of health. I, I'm, I'm not uh, exactly um, sure of how um, all the aspects of EDI can be covered in, in, uh, in such a, an, an annual lecture and how we can completely change mindsets and behaviour, but I think it's a good start. I absolutely agree on that. Um, so I see Karen has her hand. Um, just a quick comment. I was um, um, just remembering. I was um, I had a series of um, interactions. Well, I, I do have a series of interactions with the um, Institute for Academic Development, and in fact, they have been developing some, um, if you like, transitional materials. So this is to help students transition into university from different backgrounds, um, and. Um, one of the discussions with them actually was that this also could be expanded to include um, EDI focused um, uh, materials. So I just thought I would mention that. Um, also to just flag up, because um, a lot of you will be aware of it, but maybe not everybody, that um, for instance, after the um, Black Lives Matter um, protests and follow on, um, there have been a real sort of um, opening up, if you like, of the university and um, the provision and the, um, uh, to, if you like, training material workshops. Um, there have been um, a, a plethora of EDI related um, workshops and material in this area available. Um, to students and staff, and, it, and if you if you want um, to access some of that, um, uh, some of those uh, lectures and workshops, if you go to Race Ed um, uh, website, um, they have a lot of um, pre-recorded uh, material 
Um, so I just flagged that, that up. It's been a, a hotbed of activity. <laughs> yes, okay, thank you, Karen. Um, I, I just feel that the time, we don't have very much time, so maybe we should just uh, move on a little bit. The, uh, the only thing I wanted to um, also ask um, Jean uh, was if this uh, kind of lecture is for students or it's just for staff, because this is another point that we uh, highlighted in our report and that, uh, that the focus of the EDI committees and initiatives uh, is mainly for staff. And that's why we are doing what we're doing now for students and we're asking more support and more um, EDI education awareness for students rather than staff. So that is my question to Jean very quickly. Yeah, sure, Athena. Um, so yeah, we intended to be for, for staff and students. The, our intention is to pilot it with staff um, this spring, hopefully. Um, okay. We're sort of in the final stages of preparing it, but with a view to rolling it out to students and staff um, in the in the next academic year. Um, so so yeah, so we should we should hopefully try and, and, and cover everybody there. Okay, that's that's great. Thank you very much for that. Um, and I have another question. Um, sorry, Sarah, <laughs> I'm messing up our um, schedule. Uh, but the other question is that um, I, I just want to ask, like, who who are the people that uh, create this material and uh, uh, who runs these um, those uh, kind of lectures and events and all this stuff? Because, uh, for example, uh, as you said, when you were um, talking about your roles, the majority of you um, you are scientists and you also do um, this uh, have taken this role of the EDI um, person of your school, and uh, we are wondering. Um, how can you support this role and if you are responsible uh, for uh, creating the material and all this and who is if it's not you because to be fair we have heard uh, from someone uh, of course I'm not going to say who uh, from one of you uh, that uh, I'm just a, a professor uh, I, I don't know about this stuff sorry I just uh, yeah honestly we heard that so <laughs> so um, yeah so need So, I mean, in SBS, we do have an EDI officer who works almost full time, who is Kate, right? Um, and with a lot of, you know, so with the, um, with the coaching, the career coaching, we outsource that and then we administer the program and we get feedback and we see if it's doing, if it's doing as well as, as we would like and we sort of tweak what's possible. Um, so this year we're doing a slightly different coaching program to account for some, prob to account for some COVID difficulties. Um, so sometimes we do outsource things and um, one thing we have been looking at is making videos in-house because we do have actually a lot of facilities at the University of Edinburgh. But the problem is then, of course, we can't be the people making them. We just don't have the time. So it's a matter of finding, finding groups within the university who have that expertise and also have that bandwidth to do it. And there are people getting grants to sort of do that sort of thing. So Karen might speak more to cases where people have gotten grants to study EDI within the uni. Um, and then a lot of it, like I said, is actually working with organizations that, it, that are teaching like the BTO or with student support services. So student um, in biology, we have a representative from student support and from the BTO sitting on the EDI committee. Um, so things go, go back to them. So there are mechanisms for getting things done and it's not quite as clunky as it sounds, but when I started doing this role in March, um, it certainly took some learning to figure out how to get things done. And I think that's true in every big university that I've ever heard of. Oh. That's great. Thank you very much. Uh, so I see Karen has her hand up. Sorry, <laughs> I was just trying to unmute. Um, uh, yes, so we do, we get, um, so we pull in training in, in, in many ways. Um, um, so quite often, um, so we're a big university and we have um, colleagues working in the humanities and social sciences, for instance, with whom um, we do uh, talk to and collaborate. 
And in fact, um, York, who's also on this uh, call, and I, um, and in fact, Dave is involved in, in a project um, with social sciences. This is a research council funded project. And it's a project um, that happens to be looking at the impact of funding disparities um, um, in, in grants. So this is grant funding, and we are focusing on early career uh, scientists. So that's just an example. I know it's not, um, it's not a, a student focused project, but that's an example of a collaborative project between scientists and social scientists. Um, that focus on issues that are really relevant for our college. But in other ways, we, um, we work with um, the, our colleagues in social, science, uh, in social sciences, and they are um, some of the people that put together these workshops that are very relevant for us. So that's one way of pulling it in. And we also um, pull in expertise from outside so for instance, I think in a couple of weeks, we're going to be running a workshop on race. And this is for the senior management team in the College of Science and Engineering. And that's going to be put on by um, Advance HE. So that's an external uh, body being brought in to provide training in that area. So we reach out uh, in, in different ways. Of course, we do provide our own tra training as well, but um, yeah. Okay, um, thank you very much for that. Um, right, I will just, um, just pass on to Sarah now because I messed up our schedule. <laughs> yeah, we're running a little bit late anyway because of technical issues. Um, but yeah, we've touched a little bit on how you um, create your initiatives and um, the sort of responsibilities there. But we want to also just discuss a little bit more about what exactly are your initiatives that you have planned. Um, we are running short on time, so maybe just your top couple of initiatives and um, we will discuss here. But yeah, so what initiatives have you been planning this year or been working on this year and how are you assessing the effectiveness of these? Um, because one thing we sort of noticed was lots of these initiatives aren't, there's not uh, in-depth sort of research going into like how effective they are. So what methods do you use to, to um, evaluate the initiatives that you create. Um, I don't know whether maybe when I go to Victoria first, not heard from you in a while. Hi. Um, so in physics and astronomy, actually one of our focuses right now is community. So we want to make the, the well, the idea is to make the school a kind of uh, place where people feel at home, which doesn't always happen. So this includes students and staff, undergraduates, postgraduates, postdocs, academics, um, support staff, all feeling like they belong in, in physics and astronomy. Um, and I think that's partially because the university and the college is, are such big places. And um, I feel that it would be good to have it in the school. And some of the students I speak to feel the same way. Whereas nobody says, oh, I want to be a, you know, a part of the college. Um, so, so that's a kind of overarching theme we've got. At the moment, one thing that we've been doing is setting up a network um, called the School of Physics and Astronomy EDI network, which is a place where we can uh, discuss um, what we, you know, what changes we'd like to make and how to make them, but try to involve everybody and not just me as the director of EDI and the, the school management committee, but include um, students and staff at all kinds of levels. Um, so that's something that we're working on. It is a bit slow because of COVID and everybody's increased workload. Um, but that's the main theme at the moment in physics and astronomy. Yeah, I think um, COVID is slowing down a lot of things at the minute, but yeah, I'm glad to hear you're doing that. Um, Simon, if you've got your hand up, do you want to add something? I know it's just from, from the School of Geosciences, um, because we're such a broad school, in fact our EDR coordinator is a social scientist and we have a separate Athena Swan coordinator, both of whom are on the management team, she's a scientist. But what we've been managing to do is to just carry on the EDI stuff and drop in sessions and things like that through the, through the pandemic. I think um, the two things that I would highlight, one is 
we did a lot of work with our postgraduate research students, uh, which is a group of who have really been affected by the COVID uh, situation because they have a time limit on what they can do. And it's affected them disproportionately, we believe. So we did a lot of work with them over the last year with the postgraduate research office uh, in the school. So I think that's been really important because we were able to listen and just understand the, the effects. Um, and just amplifying something that Karen said about the way that we handle it. Um, so uh, we're looking at, at, in geosciences, the current way we, we're trying to move forward is looking at all the issues, um, trying to do it equally because we all get drawn into a big Athena Swan exercise, which is the way that we evaluate ultimately what we're doing. But Athena Swan really focuses on staff and, uh, and not on the students. So. It, but it draws a huge amount of staff time away from some of the other things. So we're going to try and rebalance across gender, uh, LGBT, dis disability issues and race, so that we actually look at all of these things in a more integrated way. And I think that is uh, a, a potentially really important way, because then in, in terms of the embedding that in the curriculum, you can actually get a, a really good understanding holistic approach rather than getting drawn into whatever issue currently is in the headlines. So that's well, hopefully what's going to go on. And, and in, in terms of the PGR survey, that was a really good evaluation of the activities that we were undertaking. So we, we managed to, to actually, I think, learn some very useful things, some very important things in that. Yeah, I mean, it's great you're thinking you're focusing not just on um, women's terms. I think that's been a problem for the past um, few years is that for so long um, the EDI in STEM has meant women, white women in STEM um, and we definitely need to like, expand on that and it's great to see that you're doing some work to do that. Um, so if you put your hand up again, I'm not sure if you deliberated that or <laughs> I'm assuming not, so I'll go to Karen. Um, yeah, did you have something to add Karen? Yes, um, so what Simon says is um, um, very much along the lines of, of how we're thinking. Um, I, I have spoken to you previously about the, um, the Athena Swan accreditation process and, um, and it's been very valuable in moving us forward, but it does tend to focus on, on women um, and it doesn't tend to focus on students. And um, because it takes up a lot of time, it can, um, if we're not careful, um, skew things a bit and we're, now very much focused on this more holistic approach that Simon mentioned. Uh, I was very pleased that, that he did mention it. Um, and um, so this is uh, looking at EDI across the board and you asked for a, a couple of um, top um, priorities. So um, certainly for the college, uh, diversifying the student body and so that's the broader context of wider, widening participation. Um, so that's one very high priority. Another very high priority is reducing the degree awarding gap to BAME students. So this is very high priority. And here we'll be working with Moini Gray, who's overseeing a study in this area, um, and Rowena Arshad, and she is the person that chairs um, the, uh, the race committee. And uh, what do you get your hand up? Do you just think to add? Yeah, no, we're over time. We're just on the back of what Simon had said on the School of Geosciences. Um, we are doing some training ourselves with tutors and demonstrators. We're aware that obviously ENDs are students themselves, but they also probably spend a disproportionate amount of time with students. So we're uh, implementing some unconscious bias training with them and attempt to sort of make um, learning more inclusive for everybody they, they come in contact with. As I said earlier, we've also got a newsletter, which I think sort of raises awareness about EDI, so, uh, but also EDI and um, sort of things that are going on, for instance, this month is uh, LGBT plus history month. So sort of bringing attention to things like that that students might not be aware of otherwise. Um, also in terms of, I think, the student side of things, we're trying to create visual role models uh, so in terms of the building, we're trying to sort of make sure it's not just the, the older men that are on the, the walls that are there from years ago. We've also got students and staff that are uh, doing really interesting things around the world that students can look to and see that they look like them or they're from their communities and they can do the same 
as they're doing, um, just in terms of the buildings as well, they've created more sort of accessible access as well in terms of uh, gender neutral bathrooms. Um, in terms of the curriculum as well, we've got projects that we're um, seeing with academics in their different research institutes now implementing changes to the, the curriculum and making that more um, inclusive, making sure that things like reading lists have people that are representative of the students that they're uh, teaching. Uh, and in terms of our seminars as well, we've had over the last couple of years a push to try and have more um, underrepresented groups uh, actually presenting at these seminars as well. So we've had a really a big success with that and I think it does make a big difference if students actually can see people that are representative of them so that, that's a big push that we're looking for just now. Um, uh, thank you very much for this. Uh, I think Sarah has some connection connection issues. Um, so yeah I just uh, wanted to go about the, the second. Uh, I know we don't have very much time uh, but I just wanted to ask you if you can give us an insight of how you're planning to um, assess the effectiveness of all these plans you're 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 going to, or one of your plans, um, if anyone wants to go, go for it. Any ideas of how you could or you would like to? <laughs> yes, Karen. So we typically assess. Um, um, just by following the data or by um, surveying. Um, so this is something, so um, Sinead gave a good example earlier on um, where a survey was run in biological sciences. The, the purpose of it was to, uh, purpose of that particular survey was to uh, establish the effects of COVID on um, and staff wellbeing um, across the board. And, um, um, and then that will obviously affect how the uh, the management respond, um, and then that is going to be followed up by another survey <laughs> um, to 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 test the, the the temperature to see the effectiveness um, of of that um, of those um, changes in management. So this is just an example of. Um, how, how we do try to assess uh, the, the impact of any uh, changes in practice in development. That's, uh, yeah, surveys are always very useful, aren't they? Um, and Jean, please. I, just a, uh, an example, I mean, one of the interventions that have been very successful for us in chemistry is um, our Christina Miller Fellowship Scheme. So this is a, a, a scheme that is between the postdoctoral research level and the academic level, or the sort of more established fellowship level. Um, and this uh, fellowship is only open to um, people from underrepresented groups in chemistry. And, and through this, we have actually um, increased our numbers of um, sort of research active academic staff and teaching staff because I think one thing we must remember as well is that you know staff and student don't sit separately in, in different bubbles and actually a student experience is very much who's walking into the room to to teach them um, and to see that as being really important and it's something that our students have said is important as well that you know who who is lecturing them um, is is um, is important to them so one of the ways we looked at this we is is review actually so when you bring in initiatives this initiative was brought in before my time but I I was tasked in the early days of my tenure as in this position to review the scheme and so what we did is we um rather than a survey we um spoke to the Christina Miller Fellows, we spoke to their mentors, we spoke to their host organisations, and we spoke to postdocs who the scheme would be targeted to um, broadly, but but we spoke to postdocs in, in, our, in our department. And it was really enlightening actually to understand how they viewed the scheme, what worked and what didn't. And it allowed us to um, present recommendations for the change of the scheme, um, which were adopted by the school. It was made longer, there was a route to promotion involved um, and the job advert was massively changed um, because a lot of the terms were weren't well understood in the audience that we were trying to, to target it to. So um, real advocate for review um, as well as as the sort of, um, you know, so to bring in an, uh, 
an intervention and then to review um, on, a, on a regular basis, similar to the equality impact assessments where you consult and you review and make sure you're capturing um, what you intended to, to do. Absolutely, I um, agree. Um, I'm a big fan of evaluation myself. Uh, so I think uh, Job had his hand up, but, but <laughs> sorry, uh, we just want to hear first from the panelists if that's okay. Um, okay, so David has, thank you, Job. So David has his hand up. I just wanted to, to, to make an observation about, about how, how we measure performance. And we've tried to do it in a in a more informal way by talking to people and by and by um, and sort of gathering feedback from from events. Um, I worry that many many of us in the university, our standard approach for I need to know how this is going is we reach for a questionnaire and we send out a questionnaire to people. And I think we questionnaire people to death, and we certainly are seeing that in the response rates to questionnaires. So some of the things that we do regularly, like course enhancement questionnaires and midterm course feedback questionnaires and other questionnaires that go out, the students feedback on the questionnaires is, God, not another questionnaire. I haven't got the time to do this. I don't understand the questions and nobody tells me what happens to the answers. So we, we need to do more than that. And I think it would be better for us if we were using more uh, of facilitated discussions rather than yet another, yet another questionnaire. Um, that's that's very um, interesting. Uh, I just want you to say uh, here, though, that uh, we received a very good feedback for our survey and the students were very happy with our survey. And uh, we got so many long answers, which really were really um, eye opening for us. And we used all this feedback um, for um, evaluating our uh, efforts and uh, making them, improving them. So. Um, I don't know, sometimes the way you ask things uh, play a role, I suppose, but uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, too many surveys and questionnaires, it's a little bit too much. Uh, so, um, Sinid and Karen, sorry, sorry, you, 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 you're next, you're next, okay. Um, yeah, I just wanted to say something SVS has been doing is over the, when we could still meet in person, um, we ran quite a few focus groups and that worked really well for gathering information because you can actually have more in-depth conversations with people, um, which is quite nice. So I found that to be really quite, um, the feedback from those was really helpful and really nice. And we've also um, used to have a bunch of informal sort of lunchtime meeting groups. Um, like there was an LBTGQ plus bio, one that accidentally posted all of KB and we just got all of KB. Um, so that, that sort of thing, I think, really supplements the surveys. But in terms of getting at really specific information, I think a survey is often the best tool if you're trying to get a very particular piece of information. Um, but yeah, we all we all have survey fatigue, so I think it's a matter of making the surveys count. I absolutely agree. Uh, Karen? Yeah, just a quick follow-up. Um, so I think we all agree that we need to use mixed methods. Um, and of course, the... Um, the value of surveys to scale. Um, obviously, we um, many of us have been involved with these focus groups and getting that that really high quality feedback from individuals, and we all really value that information. But um, typically, you would look, um, you have to adapt um, to the um, to the specific situation. Uh, but if you want to get if you want to get information at scale, um, then unfortunately you do have to pull out um, something like um, a survey. Yeah. Okay, so um, thank you, Karen. Um, I think you <laughs> you can add to the conversation now. Yeah, no, I, I just wanted to um, to actually the, the discussion has gone in the same direction, which is it, the, the mainstreaming part is quite important in the sense that, you know, the university now is part of this Inclusion Matters grant, which means it's doing actual research on, on EDI matters. And one thing, for example, that we've noticed, it's, it, it can be quite hard to evaluate the effectiveness of one particular intervention because it may interact with so many other things that are going on at the same time that it might be quite hard to pinpoint. Um, and I think so to some degree, this, this, this idea of mainstreaming it in, in teaching and in research is, the, is, is a real benefit. 
which you can slowly start seeing now, but um, um, it's kind of starting up, it's kind of ramping up at the moment. Um, yeah, surveys, you know, 15%, typically we get a 15% response rate to core surveys, which in absolute numbers means lots of responses. And in length of responses, there are entire essays in them, but it's still only 15%. And so you're still missing the view of 85% of the students. And so, yeah, obviously surveys can give you very high quality data, but as already mentioned a couple of times, the timing and the way you ask the questions is absolutely crucial. I absolutely agree. Anyone else who would like to um, add on this regarding um, um, effectiveness assessment? And um, another ad, but just to highlight down in case they've missed it, there's some interesting conversations happening in the chat as well. Indeed. Um, so <laughs> worth a read, and you can download the chat if you want to read it later. Um, so it's quite hard to keep up with the voice and chat at the same time. Um, yeah. Indeed. Uh, so, Sarah, I don't know uh, if we, we, we are a little bit out of time, so uh, maybe we can just yeah. um, uh, go to um, audience questions. If anyone wants to ask anything from our um, lovely students. Feel free to take the chat or unmute yourself, by the way. I mean, raise your hand first. So you can raise you your hand. hand. Yes, yeah, the same way we were doing it. Right, I see. Uh, yeah, I see there were a lot of questions uh, in the chat room and people <laughs> reply and so on. So in the meantime, um, I I want to I have a question. Um, so um, I just wanted to ask how much um, our our report and our work uh, has um, influenced your your thinking of ADI and your plans, because, for example, we did see some uh, imp very, very small improvement, uh, like, for example, for the, the dead links we mentioned in our report, um, some of them were fixed, uh, for example, from uh, Vijay, who's not here um, with us today. Um, so he, uh, from informatics, they had um, a lot, unfortunately, of dead links in their website regarding EDI. And uh, after our report, they actually um, uh, fixed that. So I was wondering if any of you also followed any of our recommendations or uh, how much you were influenced by what we um, tried to highlight. Sorry, Jean, please. Sorry, I was muted. Hi, thanks. One thing, um, it was it was great speaking to you both. And, and it did highlight to me, I think, how um, I think undergraduate students in particular are, are seen separately, sort of from, from maybe PGR students, postdocs and staff, academic and professional services staff. Um, so one thing I did try and do is, is link more with community, which I mentioned, I think, when I when I started off. So this is an undergraduate student driven, even though there's postgraduate and undergraduate students involved in community. But this was set up by the students to um, uh, to represent the students in the school. Um, and it's also run in conjunction with our sort of head personal tutor. And um, so I've certainly been more aware of trying to link to what they're doing more and also sharing what we're doing with them and being more visible there. So, so that's definitely something I think that your, your report highlighted in terms of, I think sometimes we think of EDI in terms of the numbers, you know, so in, in chemistry, we have good numbers at student levels in, in terms of um, diversity, but not so much at staff. And so we spend a lot of energy in, in, in looking at staff and, and PhD students, but actually that sort of sharing of knowledge at the undergraduate level is, is probably something that, that is being missed. And so, yeah, linking up with the undergraduate student representation a little bit more um, is, is something that we've been doing. That's great. I'm glad. <laughs> Thank you, Jane. Yeah, so Simon had his hand up. I think, yeah, I mean, I think we we ref, we reflected on the report, and it, it actually has a lot of synergies with other things that were going on. We have an EDI action plan in the school, and Athena Swan action plan. 
And so a lot of that was a realization that actually what we already planned, uh, you're highlighting, we just, we're, we're having to work through it. We have an, an, an e I think it's one action plan that's like 60 actions long. It takes four or five years to get through some of these things. So it's going to take a while to take this stuff on board. I think um, just following on and agreeing with what Jim was saying, the realization has really only come in recently that the student uh, perception and the student experience is very separate from, from the work that we've been doing with staff. I think that that, that is something that, that, that we have to understand and maybe the, the embedding it in the curriculum becomes much more a part of the general culture than, than it is at the moment. So thank you for that. You're welcome. <laughs> thank you for this answer. Um, Karen, please. Yeah, I also wanted to thank you <laughs> as well, because you reached out um, to, to us. And um, I also reflecting on the need to communicate much better to students. And um, this fits in quite well with um, not my immediate plans, but my, my kind, because I'm quite busy at the moment with um, devising a, a college EDI strategy. But um, um, the, the next step, if you like, and I mentioned this to you in our previous conversation, which is really developing much more effective communication channels. And, and in fact, we have been discussing and um, opening up um, an internship for, for a student to help us um, develop some of these ideas. So how do we communicate better to students and staff and externally as well? And, and so this is going to be, um, if you like, one of the steps that we're taking probably moving into the summer. That sounds like a great plan. Thank you, Karen. Uh, Sunit, please. Hi, yeah, so I think one of the main things I got out of your survey was that a lot of times there were questions about why, sort of why doesn't this exist? And my immediate answer was, well, it does exist. Um, and that at the university things are very poorly signposted. Um, so a lot of what we've been working on this year, myself and Kate, is making, making it easier to find resources that are there. Um, because what, what I see a lot is that someone has very thoughtfully put something in place and then no one can find it. So with the very sort of with the very minimal resources in terms of time that we have, people are doing stuff and then that stuff is going to waste. Um, and sometimes what is already in place is not perfect, but it is certainly better than nothing. And often it's very, very good and just needs some minor tweaking. Right. So a lot of what we've been doing is trying to leverage that. And then a second bit that Kate and I have been thinking about in terms of um, perhaps having more like pulse surveys and focus groups, um, of course, online, is this idea that we would very much like with the students thing to be more of a conversation. Um, so sometimes I think with students and staff, we get stuck in this thing where students say, I want this and staff feel like we have to just deliver it. Um, or why hasn't this been given? Why hasn't this been told to me? And sometimes I want to answer, well, why haven't you asked before now? Um, so I think if I think it's really important that if everyone is involved in building this, that it be a much more congenial conversation where people cooperate in good faith. Um, and that's, I think, super important to getting to making a cultural change. Um, so Kate and I have been working on <clears throat> mostly finding small mechanisms that will facilitate that. Yeah, uh, thank you Sunit, for that. Um, yeah, this is something we uh, we indeed highlighted, I think, uh, through our um, report that there is good material um, uh, online. Um, uh, also, there isn't in some cases, but there is also good material, but it's difficult to find and it's difficult to navigate. The quality, diversity, inclusion uh, main page of the university is very, it's a little bit overwhelming. Um, so I think this is an issue for, for, for a student who just tries to find uh, something very specific. Um, so today, I have to admit, I went through uh, the, um, the school's uh, website to see 
uh, what has changed. And uh, um, I'm a little bit disappointed that in some cases we still have dead links. Uh, for example, if um, someone wants from the chemistry, I'm sorry, Jane, but from the chemistry, um, uh, it's just an example, uh, it's not just the chemistry, um, from the chemistry website, uh, it's first of all very, quite difficult to find the equality diversity bin, which is under the community, I think, bit. And uh, then uh, the, uh, the link to, to equality and diversity advisors uh, leads you to a, a no such page. Um, page. So um, it's a little bit, I know it cannot change overnight, but I think it's something that it needs a little bit more attention. Um, and uh, yeah, we, we, we try to highlight that as much as we can. Um, so I think we are a little bit uh, <laughs> over the, the, the agreed time. So uh, Sarah. Um, yeah, um, just, yeah, I completely uh, agree there with Athena. Um, and yeah, let's just thank everyone for coming along. It's been a really good discussion and I hope we can have more of these discussions. And I've seen in the chat, you're engaging with students um, and it's really, really good to see that. Um, I think yeah, there is all, that's always been something that's missing. Um, so yeah, encourage everyone to continue engaging with students. Um, and if you ever want to have more conversations like this, we are always happy to host or help with them. Um, but yeah, so thank you for your time. Uh, sorry we've gone over it and for the technical issues. Um, but yeah, I hope that you've kind of heard a bit more about what other schools are doing and seen what you can improve on um, as well as what you identify built what you do uh, what you do well. So yeah, thank you. And for anyone that's interested in reading our report, I did put it in the chat, I can pop it in again. And um, we are still continuing our EDI workshops throughout the semester. So you can go to the Women in STEM social media or website to find out more about them. Um, so yeah, I think that's everything. Anything to add, Pina? Yeah, um, I, I would like to thank everyone as well for your time and your uh, answers and your insight. Uh, I just uh, want to say that uh, obviously this happened today for you to engage with students and it's amazing that that happens uh, through the chat. Um, and uh, I just want again to say that uh, we are continuing uh, our uh, efforts with um, me, myself and the Women in STEM uh, supported by other students, um, student societies. So uh, I know it's a complicated um, procedure to, 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 to get to have us involved or have you involved to what we're doing. Uh, but at least uh, if you could promote our uh, workshops or um, our mentoring scheme, our work to your students, that would be uh, really appreciated. Um, so thank you very much. I don't know if anyone wants to add anything last. Uh, no? Okay. So thank you very much, everyone. Have a good night. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks so much. It was really useful. Bye. Bye. Thanks.